the astronauts suit up for entry. The ascent and orbital phases of the mission have gone extremely well. Now the final phase must be completed. Before that begins... Columbia, you have a go for payload bay door closing. The doors, which have been open a total of 47 hours during the flight, must now be closed. Then, using the RCS thrusters, Columbia will maneuver into deorbit burn attitude, head down and backwards, fire the Ohm's engines one last time, and descend into the Earth's atmosphere. Columbia is out of contact during the Ohm's burn. Mission Control will not know if this burn was successful until they are in communication with the spacecraft over Australia. It is now over the Indian Ocean on the other side of the world, but from that distance the burn must be precise so that later Columbia will hit the lake bed target in California. Columbia, this is Houston through Yargity. We're standing by. Columbia is now committed to entry. With an RCS post-burn maneuver and several firings, it is oriented to a heads-up, nose-first attitude headed toward entry interface. This is where the atmosphere begins, at approximately 400,000 feet. From that moment until the shuttle reaches 165,000 feet, it will be in communication blackout out of touch with mission control for almost 20 minutes. The landing site is almost 4,400 miles from entry interface. Chase planes are preparing to take off. One will call out altitudes and check Columbia for any damage just prior to landing. When the shuttle touches down here, it will be traveling at 216 miles per hour. Right now, it's going more than 17,000 miles per hour. Before it lands, it must slow down, lose energy, and it must survive the intense heat caused by traveling through the atmosphere at such a high rate of speed. Several S-turns, or roll reversals, are used to slow down and maneuver Columbia through the atmosphere. This one is done at 256,000 feet, when it is traveling at more than 26 times the speed of sound. This one is done at 208,000 feet. During these two roll reversals, entry heating is most severe, with temperatures reaching 2,500 degrees some places on the vehicle. The aluminum skin will melt at 320 degrees. The silicate tiles must insulate the vehicle from the tremendous heat. Since there is no test facility on Earth to simulate the aerodynamic and structural environment Columbia is in right now, only calculations could be used to predict what would happen during this phase of the flight. The predictions and calculations had to be right. Hello there, Houston, uh, Columbia's here. Hello, Columbia, Houston's here. How do you read? Flying clear, and we're doing uh, Mach 10.3 at 180 AS. And we couldn't agree more, John. Your state vector's good. We've got the good data in here. The entry trajectory, velocity, and position look good. Columbia is heading for home now only 470 miles away. And John, we're showing you rolling right. Looking good. We're showing him crossing the coastline, Flat. Columbia, we show you crossing the coast now. The shuttle is first sighted at about 100,000 feet with a long-range camera from Anderson Peak, California. What a way to come to California. Flat photo, I still look perfect right on the nominal. Roger that, out of 112K, 4.8 Mach. We see Del Ass, 21 degrees. A roll reversal is done over Bakersfield, California.
Chase has a tally. Roger, Chase. And we're seeing 1.3 Gs coming around the hat. Roger that. The astronauts are making the final turn to line up with the runway. Columbia, you're really looking good. Right on the money. Right on the money. And turning on the final, your winds on the surface are calm. Right on the wind. You're right on the glide slope, Columbia. Clear, John. That's real good up here. Chase reports no tile or other damage is evident underneath the shuttle. Columbia's altitude is now just over 5,000 feet. Without power, Columbia must land. It cannot make another attempt. They're coming. They're down. of Columbia has been a success. The astronauts and the vehicle have met or exceeded all 144 flight test objectives. The integrity of all the systems, propulsion, avionics, structural, flight control, power, and thermal have been affirmed. John Young's comments after returning home I can't tell you what a tribute that is to the American working man and the American working woman, too. You can't imagine the variety of people who worked on this vehicle, from all walks of life, all capabilities and limitations. It's all due to their individual efforts. They proved that they can do the job. They proved it for the world to see. And I'm mighty proud to be associated with folks like that. What a tribute, indeed. The Columbia represents an achievement in aerospace technology and development never before realized in the history of manned spaceflight. It is our basic building block for the future. It's what we've been trying to do for the last 10 years. We've got a vehicle with a payload performance that will allow us to do that, much cheaper than we've been able to do it before. It will immeasurably improve the defensive capability of the country. It will help develop space science and technology. When we get operational, the space shuttle will be able to do in five to 10 years what it would have taken us 20 to 30 years to do otherwise. We couldn't do it if we didn't have the space shuttle and